from the nation's capital, this is the Fly Fishing Consultant Podcast with your host, Rob Snowett. Take a dose of every day. But how am I supposed to stay? In a world built on empty ways. And the lessons are all the rage. Thank you for downloading the Fly Fishing Consultant Podcast. This is Rob Snow White. We're up to episode 80 in the ones where I'm doing most of the talking. This is going to be about shad flies. It's February 19th. Spring is near. I've got shad on my mind. People on TPFR have got shad on their mind. Customers at the shop have got shad on their mind. And clients are already emailing me discussing. I will be open Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays during the week, Saturdays and Sundays. For guiding. So if you're listening to this now, you can try and book a date with me. I will not book clients to fish or I will not go out and fish until the water is 62 degrees Fahrenheit. If the fish are crazy active in the cold, well, then I will change my mind. But morphologically, these fish don't get to where I think it is worth your time and money until the water's about 62. So I'm going to talk about shad flies today and discuss what they're made of, where to get them, how to fish them, how to rig them. Probably that's about it. If you haven't listened to the previous podcasts specifically on shad, I would suggest you go and do that now. Additionally, I'm going to do an AMA sometime late this summer. So if you go to my website, robsnowwhite.com, right under the main banner, it just says podcast AMA. It's a link. Ask me a question. It can be completely anonymous. I don't track anything. The only required questions are the date you submitted it. I don't know why. And um, your question. So that's about it. Let's start talking about the shad flies and in the order of which I think they're most important. Uh, let me get some visual aids for myself. So talk amongst yourselves. Benefit of a small office. Oh, boy. Okay. All right, I'm back. The first one I want to discuss, and these are shad flies over 17 years of taking people out professionally, I, I kind of figured shout out right away and then the, you know, the stripers with them and people have been hiring me to take them out ever since. That's one way I got started in doing what I do. And I've developed these patterns. I've tweaked them and I'm pretty sure they're exactly the way I want them at this moment. I may or may not work on another pattern, but to add to this list, but these are them in a particular order. Number one, there's two of them. It's crazy. I might have to draw a graph and put it on the blog. The Snow White Damsel and Shad Jig. Then you have the Shad Puff, the Shad Buster, and a one-inch clouser made out of bucktail. Let me go through those now. This is going to be a crazy podcast because I didn't write anything down. This is just me talking. So there's no outline for me to look at. To start off, the Snow White Damsel is the most productive fly we throw. It, When it is thrown, it is responsible for more shad bites and more shad to the net than any other. Now, if you remember back to the previous podcast – that there's a stratification vertically in the water of where the fish are going to be based on depth and water temperature and water speed. Not so much on clarity and structure, but if you had an open space and you had optimal current and warmth, you would probably have hickory shad and then crappy and stripers and then American Shad, 
And then white perch, largemouth, smallmouth, catfish, carp, herring, and whatever else might be hanging out down on on the bottom. And I'm going to talk closer to the microphone, Jason. Sorry about that. I'm just staring off at these awfully blue painted walls in my office. So if you want to get to these fish, you have to get your fly down to them. There's two ways to do that. And if you're fishing from shore, I suggest you use a sink tip. Sink tip, just less you have to deal with, less chances of it all getting tangled and lost on the bottom. It just facilitates the fishing better if you have a sink tip from shore. Now, if I'm in a boat, I'm going to use a full sinking line. And that's most likely going to be a 350 to 400 grain Orvis depth charge. It's the sinking line I've always used because I've been chad fishing as long as I've been a customer and or employee of Orvis. And your sink tips, you know, you can use a teeny line, a Rio, Orvis bank shot. Um, I mean, everybody's got a sink tip out there. And you can basically just go go by your price because this is not technical fishing as you already hear me discuss in previous podcasts. So if the Snow White Damsel is the number one fly, to get it down there from shore, which is where I'm doing most of my fishing because I don't fish where I don't guide normally. I'm not going to go out on a boat at Fletcher's, take my canoe out, rent one of their boats, or put the drift boat up there. Because that's not where I'm taking my clients. I'm taking them from shore. So if I do have free time, I'm going to fish where my clients are fishing just to get a better sense of what's going on there and then. I need to get my fly down fast. I'm going to use the 132-ounce, unfortunately, lead jig head. I get these from eBay. I just went to eBay earlier and did 1 slash 32 jig head. And I usually do price... Uh, plus shipping lowest first. This one pops up. Huge lot, 100, 132 ounce barbed jig, unpainted, number six crappy hooks. Now, those are bulbous. I don't like the round kind. Here's another type, tube heads. I'll come back to those later. Uh, The ones I like, and I'm just scrolling through, minnow heads apparently is a, a nice one. Look at this. Four hand-tied 132-ounce darts for crappy. Now, that absolutely will get you shad. And I, I would guess minnow head is my preference for types. Unpainted is fine with me. You can always get them painted. It's going to cost more. Or you could go to your craft or hobby store and get a paint. And, geez, those are hideous looking. And you will get... Find out and just say, hey, man, I'm going to painting jigs. I guess Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's probably have them too. So that's where I get them. I get them in bags of 100. And um, they even have shad, 100 shad dart jigs painted white, pink, chartreuse, hot orange, and like Fr- French's yellow mustard. Um, 1440 for those. So that's where I get them. I'm using that 132 ounce not only to get the sink tip down faster, but it's going to pull a dropper fly down faster. I'm always going to fish a dropper fly during the shad run because there's a lot of fish in there and a lot of species. From there, uh, you smash the barb on that jig head, and that keeps your dropper line from falling off. So if I'm using a sinking line, I'm going to have like three feet of 20-pound to about two feet of 12 pound to the lead fly, which 99% of the time is going to be the jig head. And then I use eight pound between the jig head and the dropper. And the droppers are going to go in order. Snow White Damsel, Shad Puff, Shad Buster, one inch Clouser tied with calf tail. It's going to be redundant throughout the night. Snow White Damsel is going to be chartreuse. Ostrich, it's going to have a couple strands of multicolor crystal flash. 
small bead chain eyes. I don't know technically the size of the bead chain, but they're the ones you'd use for dog tags. Uh, you can get them at Home Depot, 15 feet for like $6, but you've got to sit there and cut them all individually with pliers. I would suggest you get a little pair of spring loaded pliers, wire cutters to cut them. I like chartreuse. I'm not sure if the fish eat it more, but when the water is clear enough for me to see things, I can see it easily. The colors for the shad jig and the shad snow white damsel is tied on a size 10 curved shrimp scud hook barbless, and it is from the fly shack. Put that one away. The shad jig is more or less going to be a tale of silver flashaboo. The silver flashaboo is different than the other flashaboos. It's more like Christmas tinsel. It's very light. It's very lofty. It undulates well in the water. It's not as dense or as thick as the non-metallic flashaboos like the pearlescent one. I use about three quarters of an inch of that. And then over that, I'm going to wrap just straight up as Taz. I like a hot pink and I like a chartreuse. I usually don't think the fish are striking one more than the other. I will switch back and forth. But as my lead fly to get my droppers down is this guy. And I'll switch them in and out. I'll go from chartreuse to pink. I've tied them in like a sky blue, red works. I just usually use what's at hand. And for the last couple of years, I've kept all of my body materials for these flies in a big Ziploc bag. And when you've got you know, three yards of pink and three yards of chartreuse, it takes a while to go through them. That's more or less why I've been using them. An additional tail material besides the flashaboo in silver is going to be straight up polar flash. And this is by, uh, is it Hedron? I can't read. Uh, polar flash. I like them in, in pretty much any color. The pearl works really nicely. It lights up well in the water. And the whole idea of these flies is to light up and set them a apart from everything else in the water. We learned from the podcast before that the shad are not feeding. They are striking out of aggression at things they think are eating their eggs. And I'll talk about eggs more later. So they're biting at your flies because they think it's just in the way and annoying them or it's trying to eat the eggs that the females are going to release. So if you can get your fly to stand out, and there's a lot of shiners in the water that are uh, about four inches long. So if you want to go for stripers, that's, that's a good bet. There's a lot of shiners in the water. Mostly just small minnows, stuff that's you know like shoestring french fry size, tiny. And I said earlier three quarters of a tail of an inch, three quarters of an inch, because these fish are not biting to kill. They're not really biting at the head of the organism, they're just kind of nipping at it to get it out of the way. The longer the tail, the increased chance they're probably going to nip at the tail and not the hook. Fish strike a head not only to kill the organism, but also to swallow it head first. If these things bite at the tail, they're not biting to feed on it. They're just saying, get out of my way. It's also nice that they ride I don't know, kind of odd in the water with that jig head the way the monofilament ties in and that's the jig head so that is going to be the lead for every other fly and we already know that the snow white damsel is just about an inch long because i talk about it in every other podcast so i need not to describe that one in detail next up is the shad puff this just came from oh, the, and the shad jig is basically just my own version of a shad dart i just created something and it works. The Shad Puff, I have one over here for a visual aid. I did it at least earlier while I was typing up the questionnaire. I'm going to grab another one. I've got a whole bunch of these because I'm starting to fill my boxes for guiding and for selling. 
if the shad jig is super easy to tie, the shad puff doesn't get much more difficult. Again, this one is tied short tail, a little bit over a centimeter. The body is just bright colored thread. The eyes are going to be size 10 bead chain. And if you want to go on line, I am at ballchain.com. And if you look up chain numbers, 10 is 4.5 millimeters. If you go back to the Shad podcast, you'll find out the Shad egg is kind of close to that size. So when you have either side of this fly having these eyes on it, it looks a little more like maybe a minnow has um, an egg in its mouth, sort of like the egg-sucking leech of steelhead and salmon fishing. And these are, let's see, plumbing applications, vertical blinds, swatch sample retention chain, carpet and tile samples, etc. It is stainless. I can find you a giant spool of it online for under $30, most likely, without shipping. I got another, Oh, there's my fly. The one I was looking for earlier is behind my can of Coke. The fly is tied in three different colors. Just to make it more motley, just to make it stand out more. Three opposite colors. So let's say you want to tie up three of these. I would have three color tails. I'd have three color thread for the body. And the head, which I didn't mention earlier because I don't have a set of notes for this, an outline. I'm making this up. There is chenille wrapped around the dumbbell eyes. So three colors of chenille, three body colors, three flash. All these flies, if you haven't figured out, very inexpensive to tie. One of them is because they are just simple flies that only really need to get in front of the shad. We're not matching a hatch. There's nothing intricate about them. It is plain and simple. Second, if we're fishing from shore, there's a lot of stuff for flies to get hooked on and lost submerged structure, there's monofilament dangling from the trees, there are overhanging trees, and there's all sorts of stuff behind people. If you don't cast correctly and accurately, you're going to lose a bunch of flies in the trees. I've had a client go through two dozen in two hours. Thus, these are not 10-minute long flies to tie with expensive exotic materials, everything you should have with you. Necessarily not in these bright colors, bright colors, again, to stand out. My first choice of these is going to be a pearlescent tail, so either pearlescent flashaboo or polar flash. Hot red thread by Orvis. You can use Danville flat waxed 210 denier pink. And then I do a chartreuse chenille head. These, I believe, are Polar chenille. Hold on a moment. Oh, not even chenille. These are... I'm using medium trilobal antron. Chenille. Oh, I guess it is chenille. From Hairline Dubbin. That makes a nice ball on the head. And this is, you know, the name basically is stolen from the... Like the bonefish puff. This is a shad puff. It's got the puff head. And everyone looks at it and says, Oh, great looking bonefish fly. Well, I I guess you could use it for bonefish. It's designed for shad. Short tail, bright body, different color head, just to stand out. My second one is going to be, um, let's see, what color tail? I don't know, probably a copper gold, and then a chartreuse body, a hot pink head. And then the third option would be... uh, What is it? Chartreuse... No, I'd do a pink tail. I would do chartreuse body and an orange head. There's, you know, just three simple colors. The hook, if you're asking, is the Sabre 7031 size 4. It's round bend, down eye, 2X long, 1X strong, bronze finish. I thought I was getting a whole bunch of these at the last fly fishing show in Somerset. I accidentally grabbed four bags of 70 30s which are bigger uh, i'm gonna have to stock up on these because the bags are by the hundred and i'll tie 
probably 150 of these in the next couple of weeks. I'm also going to be at the Virginia Fly Fishing and Wine Festival selling shad flies, which should be just before the peak of the shad season. Remember, the shops around D.C. metro area, most shops in general have a very slim selection of shad flies. So if you want to buy them, just go to robsnowwhite.com, click store, and they are under custom flies. That's the shad puff. It's got the big head on it. It moves through the water. It's very easy to see. When somebody strips this extremely fast, about six to eight hundred inches under the surface, I can see it, and I can see the shad coming up to chase it. They look like, I mean, sailfish coming up to chase a teaser or another fish coming up. They will swat at it with their mouths aggressively, and they just come out of the deep. And it's it's pretty awesome to see. And I can hone in my eyes on that chartreuse ball, which is probably why I go chartreuse first, then pink, and then orange. There's probably other colors out here, but those are the main ones I use. And you really can't go wrong. You could probably have one that's all chartreuse, all pink, or all orange. I don't care. The fish don't care. But after doing this, this is what I have chosen and I'm sticking with this one at the moment. The other problem is um, not much. No problem with this one at all. Just try not to lose them in the trees. Next up is the Shad Buster. So if you tie a Shad Puff without the chenille head and just wrap the body with Stretch magic, you're good to go. Same tail, polar flash or flashaboo, about just over a centimeter sticking out the back. The body is going to be wrapped with basically clear vinyl rib. Vinyl rib is what you call it in fly fishing. In the crafting world, I go with stretch magic in 1.5 millimeters or 0.059 inches. It's stated as bead and jewelry cord. It's clear, it's stretchy, it comes in different diameters. I prefer this diameter. And what it does when you wrap your body with fluorescent orange, chartreuse, or hot red thread is it gives a translucency. It builds up the body, so it's concentrically wrapped, and I refer to it as it lights up the fly. It makes the fly color appear bigger. Now, granted, you could take ultra chenille, which you use for San Juan worms and probably just wrap a body. But this kind of lights up. It catches a little bit more light. It's got a kind of soft, chewy texture. So other fish hold on to it a little bit longer. We ended up catching a lot more non-shad species on this. Believe it or not, in orange, I probably hooked four steelhead up on the Salmon River. It's a good little striper fly. And if you go back to that stratification with all those fish being in the river at the same time, it's not just shad that are going to eat these, specifically on the Potomac River. It's it's a mixed bag. You don't know what you're going to get. The stretch magic can be pulled and stretched out, as its name is, to vary the thickness as you wrap it. So you can give it a bulkier head, And again, just the size 10 bead chain eyes. Very simple fly to make. Pictures of it online. If you just look these up, you'll see them. Just do snow white shad fly. And I'm going to go over what shad flies on Google Images look like in a minute. You can follow along while you listen. Next up is going to be that one inch clouser. It's going to be on the same hook, the size 4. Let me go check the other ones. I'm going to pause you this time. Have I been gone 10 seconds or have I been gone for three months? Nobody knows. We just watched Flight of the Navigator. If you haven't watched that movie, check it out. I don't know if it's on Netflix, but a kid basically disappears and uh, comes back eight years later and he hasn't aged. It's a mystery. Let's see. The other ones I like are 7011 size 6s by Sabre. Dry fly and light nymph, round bend, down eye, 1x long, standard wire, light bronze finish. And all these flies have 
a wide hook gap, the distance between the hook point and the shank of the fly. And I like that because I don't know. Visually, I look at it and I know it, it just balances for me. It gives a little bit more space for these fish to bite. Um, to me, it's it's aesthetically pleasing, I would say. As I hope all of these flies are for you and, and the fish, but the fish don't care. The clouser. So you can take that polar flash or that uh, flashaboo and lash down that for your clouser. And then two different colors for the body material. We're going to use the same bead chain as the Snow White Damsel and Caftail. I like pink and chartreuse. Don't know why. It goes with that motif of the watermelon flies earlier that I tied my hoppers. Easy to see, pretty inexpensive. Nothing fancy about it. It's just like a little one-inch clouser. And everything else in the river will eat it because everything in the Potomac River eats other fish. For fishing these flies, I think the faster you strip, the better. Not only are you going to cover more space faster, but I think it drives the fish just a little more bonkers that they are going to eat your fly. Like I said, you strip fast under the surface and you will see them come up. If you let them sink to the bottom and slowly bounce them, you're going to get white perch. Just the way it is. If you can find the snakeheads, more power to you. But I would carry some of those clousers about four inches long, bucktail, chartreuse and white, red and white. I don't know. Whatever. Snakeheads seem to just eat. They don't really care about color. It's more of your fly being at the right place at the right time. So for these shad flies, I'm going to go over your shopping list. You need size 4 and size 6 hooks from the fly shack. You need size 10 bead chain. You need standard um, ceiling fan bead chain. You need at least one spool of 1.5 millimeter stretch magic. You need multicolor crystal flash, three colors of thread. If you want to do three colors of the flies, if you think that they might be eating different colors, and three different colors of flashaboo, multicolor crystal flash, size 10 curved shrimp scud hooks, and favorite color S Taz, 132 ounce jig heads. You can get those at a fly shop for fairly inexpensive, what you can get at a fly shop. Now I'm going to let you in on a little secret here. There are fly fishing things besides the tie materials you can get at other stores. When I worked at Orvis Tyson's the first time years ago, our fishing manager, Stone, didn't use shad flies. In fact, he was the only one that had experienced shad fishing. We didn't know what we were doing a whole lot back then, and that's why maybe we were foul hooking gizzard shad more often. I don't know. But these flies developed from not really knowing how to fish for shad in the faster water of the Potomac from the slower waters in the Rappahannock after college. So 99, 2000, 2001, we're out fishing with stone. And he is smacking Americans and hickories just left and right on a Cortland five weight. I'm like, Stone, what are you using? And he opens up his vest. He pulls out a small jig head with a, I guess you'd call it a tube bait. Let me double check these. Call them tubes. Yeah, tubes. All right. Um, like a one and a half inch long tube in like a chartreuse color. They worked just as well as any shad fly or shad dart you could throw. So if you're new to fly fishing, if you don't tie flies, if your local fly shop doesn't carry shad flies, if you don't have time for me to order you some, and the turnaround's pretty quick. They don't take that long. You can dig through your fishing tackle or go to Walmart and get some itty bitty jig heads and these tube baits. Some of them have like salt and stuff on them, colors, flavors, I don't know. But it didn't really seem to matter too much. Uh, this is crappy.com, and this is the image I use a lot of the time. Mini jig head leg heads. 
Visit pagecrappy.com. Let's see what they – how do you work a tube bait and rig one? Well, that's common knowledge, I thought. What do we have here? I use tube jigs about 95% of the time. You know, it just has a picture of them. So it's little jig heads. These have the jig head on the outside, which is how Stone had it rigged, versus shoving shoving the actual lead head inside. Either way, I think you're going to catch fish. Pink and white has worked re- really well for us. Red and white, chartreuse. These things are very expensive. I think at Dick's, you can get an actual kit that has the jig heads and these with them. The fish will tear them up. They will rip all the little skirty, rubbery legs off of them. So you're going to have to go through a bunch in a single day. They're not as sturdy as a shad fly. The second thing you can do is just get crappy jigs. Let's see what crappy jigs look like these days. Crappy jigs. Just chenille. There we go. I mean, if you just look up crappy jigs, my goodness. Everything there will catch shad just about. Jig head, chenille bodies, feather tails. These ones look amazing. Conradfishing.com. I would throw the chartreuse one, pink and white one, absolutely. There are other options than actually using flies. I shouldn't be telling you that, but, hey, I'm here to provide information for you. Um, the reason I have 8 and 12-pound tippet, we don't know what else is down there. As I said before, you can definitely hook into something bigger. You might foul hook an even bigger fish. You don't know. Be prepared. Five weight is the minimum I would go. Eight weight is standard. I would always carry eight weight with you for the snakeheads down here or gar in case you see other fish moving. I think that just about sums up what I have for shad flies. I'll take pictures of these. I'll put them up on the blog. We're going to release this uh, a couple days. Then it looks like Dr. Adams from Bonefish and Tarpon Trust. We're trying to nail down some other people. The Lancaster Fly Fishing Show. There will be more podcasts coming up in the regular future. Jason is going to be coming down with Yoshi. I think we will definitely podcast those couple of days. It's going to be before the April beer tie. Off the top of my head, I don't know what date that is. It's the second Monday of the month, and everyone's welcome. The next two beer ties, we will be tying shad flies. Oh, I was about to close this out and finish up, then I remembered I was going to go through the Google images of shad flies so you can follow along at home. I'm Googling shad flies. Uh, You're going to get mayflies come up, which is, I guess, another name for a mayfly. So images. Don't need mayflies. Okay. You going to scroll down. There's a shad buster. The ones I like, it's got orange and chartreuse tails with a circle of orange line. That is going to be single barbed. I have mentioned this blog before. These are some pretty cool looking shad flies. I would definitely suggest you look at that site. A lot of that stuff is craft store found. The ones that have expensive cones, I don't like because, frankly, like I said before, we're going to lose them. I don't like marabou tails. I want flash in them. This is just, and you're going to see a major inconsistency. If you were to just look up mayfly patterns, there's a lot of consistency here. The only thing is, bright colors, and they're small. And very few of them I find aesthetically appeasing appeasing to be a shad fly in my standards. Um, A lot of them, I mean, it's kind of the same shape. You're not seeing any stores here. These are basically just people and bloggers posting pictures. If you look up, I've mentioned Wu's flies before. Those are Japanese spoons on little itty-bitty hooks, and I've seen them do crazy things. There are Tommy Maggioli's flies. You can buy those at some of the local Orvis stores. The only consistency in any of this is colors, 
I don't think you should have them too long. There's um, some nice ones by Alex Binstead. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe going through these wasn't that productive. And you're going to see mine pictured. I'm currently taking pictures of them. The ones I just used for visual aids. I will have those up on the blog so you can go through these. But definitely look up shad flies, shad patterns to get your ideas. Shad fly patterns. And I'll do fly tying. Not a whole lot out there, folks. I'm not saying mine are better than others. Mine are just true, inexpensive, easy to tie. Oh, there's a little Shad Clouser. That's one of my flies. And then you can see some of the flies I don't do anymore. Here's like a brown Mylar chartreuse one. Okay, I'm just going to sign off. All right, Jason, take it away. Thank you for joining us for the Fly Fishing Consultant Podcast. For more information or to contact Rob, please go to www.robsnowwhite.com.